Connolly, your den at the door, again here at beautiful Sunset Park on a most remarkably beautiful Sturgeon Bay day uh, in Door County, and we're interviewing um, Miss Chrissy uh, Roning, mm -hmm. and uh, you are the director of this art fair? Well, I'm the coordinator along with a lot of help from a lot of friends and family. <laughs> Humbly and well put, oh, wow. I must say. <laughs> well, I couldn't do it without them. No, and you were saying this is the ninth annual right. Sturgeon Bay, right. mm -hmm. and they're always held memorial. Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend, Saturday and, and Sunday. And uh, we were here many years. It's a lovely event. Right. And can you tell me how many uh, artists are here? Uh, we have 95 artists that uh, signed up for the art fair. And they, we have jewelers and painters and potters and uh, photographers, a real nice range of art media. Uh, it's really something for everyone. Now, how are these artists chosen, Christy? Okay, it's a pre-juried event. Um, it, a couple of ways. I, during the, the summertime, I visit other art fairs around the, the state and um, more or less pre-jury invites some of these uh, finer artists to our event and uh, we'll send them an invitation. And then we, uh, people learn about it from others and send their, their slides to us and uh, we go from there. So if they were, if a future potential artist wanted to get into this show, it looks like there perhaps is a little room left, uh, in the future who would they contact? Uh, the Sturgeon Bay Visitor uh, Center. Very good. That's that's the group that sponsors this. And from then, from there, they could get then, the then right they information. Will take their in, and we usually send out the prospectus for the show in late January, early February, and uh, and then between that and the end of March, we get the responses and start to put the show together. And, and here we and, have it today. <laughs> and then you have uh, some judging in certain categories? Well, then once the artists are all set here, and I'm just about ready to get my jurors, we invite um, artists or art directors from other uh, venues and uh, institutions uh, each year to come and jury the sh show and we have a first and second place, a best to show and some honorable mentions are given to the participants and by the end of this day. Then we have something that's really a lot of fun because everyone, anyone who comes to the fair can be a jurist themselves and we have something called the People's Choice Award. Uh, well, you have it. <laughs> I don't. And um, when you come to the fair we give you a pamphlet and you be by the go through the fair and you can vote for your favorite and that person will receive a, a token of our esteem on a Sunday afternoon. Wonderful, Chrissy. Now, other years I've been here, we've had a bit of rain that oh, I recall. Sure. How did you order such perfect weather, Chrissy? Oh, we're getting the hang of this, I guess. I guess you're getting it down. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, it's a great venue. It's a lovely day. Uh, we're on the south side of the Sturgeon Bay, uh, and we can actually see a bit of Pottawatomie Park over there. Yeah. It's a lovely place to come with the family. It's a family event. We have art activities for the children, uh, t-shirt, paint, uh, uh, drawing and uh, we have a big mural here that everyone can participate in all day long and tomorrow we'll have a uh, wood sculpture oh my for the kids to marvelous and we have entertainment galore. entertainment and uh, food and food and, and strolling and strolling uh, musicians as well our, our favorite um, the fiddler uh, John is here again. He's been with us every every year except one year. I think he had to go to somebody's wedding or something. But he's been with us, and he's just a delight. He's like a Pied Piper. Yes, he does a lovely job. Have, so that's a good mood. And we have a concertina player. I think is going to arrive today too, and he'll be here today. But um, our fiddler will be here both days. Well, best of luck in this well, art fair you. in Sturgeon Bay, and uh, we're looking forward to great success oh, for your whole thank group. You. I just see and all these cars come in. It's fabulous. Well, people are. Are obviously coming with a great smile on their face yeah. and staying and enjoying themselves. Great. Thank you Thank very you, much. Christy. Thank you. Thanks. And once again, Dennis Connolly here uh, at this beautiful art fair. And part of the art fair is the children's painting wall. Um, is how I would describe it. It's an art project uh, in the works here uh, where kids are being creative and using colors and I can see using grass bits and uh, <laughs> expressing themselves and they're the future um, art co uh, community of Door County and we have with us Margaret Lucas. Margaret, hi Margaret. And your capacity today at this art fair? 
Oh, just volunteering and helping with the 50-foot art, art mural. It's beautiful mural. It's working out. And uh, how many kids do you think will be eventually participating? Oh, I maybe two, three hundred. Depends how many oh, come my. walking by. Oh my! But, but what happens is that as the the mural fills up, then we put it against the the wall, and then we start all over again with the brand new mural. So. Oh, so it could we could have enough mural to uh, go around City Hall oh, if they wish to. Oh, perhaps yes, if they wanted to do. Marvelous, that. <laughs> marvelous, Margaret, and. So you've got a beautiful day, and the media they're working in is watercolor, I hope? Um, it's tempera paint, so if it, get, if it gets on them, then it can come off. It yeah. won't be bad. So we encourage them to put a smock on and roll their sleeves up and just paint whatever their heart desires. Yeah, and they're doing a beautiful job. Floral things and hearts and pseudo landscapes and bugs. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful effort on a wonderful day. Yes, it's lots of fun. Good, good. <laughs> Um, Argaret, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to interview one of the mothers right. and artists. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Hi. Hi, uh, Dennis, and your name? My name is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi. And uh, we have our uh, cameraman extraordinaire and uh, producer, Laddie Chapman. And can you tell me this is uh, your My daughter, Ella. Hi, Ella. And Ella is very intent on this. I think Van Gogh used to be that intent, if I recall, when I met him. And Ella, can you tell me, uh, that's good, what are you deciding to paint on this mural today? A flower right now. That is a nice flower. And the colors you're using, they're so beautiful, Ella. Up yep. Now we're mixing. <laughs> yep. Now, did you ever, Ella, paint like this before? Did you do that or just finger painting? Uh, was painting. Uh huh. And finger painting. Done yeah. Brush painting and finger oh, painting. Oh, good. And does mommy help you with some of the painting? No. That's yeah. very good. And do you have any dogs or cats at home? Mm hmm. And what are their names? Uh, one's Ruby. Ruby? Would you like to say hi to Ruby and f for the television? Say hi. Hi. Very good, Alice. Thank you. Beautiful work here. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Oh, if I can get up. <laughs> At this picnic table uh, in beautiful Sunset Park, we have some more artists and future artists enjoying themselves with their mother and teacher of the moment. Mm -hmm. And your name, please? My name is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. And your daughter's names? Morgan and Emma. Hi, Morgan and Emma. You girls have very pretty hair, don't mm -hmm. you? Yep. Thank you. And thank you. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me what you and Mommy are drawing? Hey, what are you drawing? Can you tell them? Mm -hmm. Can we tell them? Grass. Grass. That's really nice grass, isn't it? Is the grass going to stay on the ground or do you think it will? It will. It will, yes. Is it going to go onto a t shirt? No. Yes. Oh, that's going to be great. And are you drawing a sun also? Let's yeah. See. That's very bright and the sun helps the grass to grow, doesn't it? Yep. And what else is on your paper? A heart. A heart, and that's a pretty heart. And that means we love you, right? The heart? Sort of, yeah. And I think I see clouds. Do I see clouds? Yeah. They're very pretty. And the clouds, there's no clouds in the sky today, are, is there? It's so bright and nice, isn't it? Well, you're a very good artist and a very good girl. Thank you for joining us today. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are, Dennis Conley, your den at the door, again in Sunset Park, a beautiful, if not sometimes underutilized, park in Sturgeon Bay. Sturgeon Bay in Door County, as you know, has many, many beautiful parks. It has county parks that sometimes go somewhat undiscovered. Our beautiful state parks, uh, some of the finest state parks in our state. It has woods, uh, we have uh, city parks. Uh, Sturgeon Bay has done a wonderful job both preserving and enhancing 
and encouraging the use of their parks, uh, but this Sunset Park has a very special place. It's a bit windy here, so I hope that uh, that's not disturbing your sound uh, transmission. Uh, we're sitting on the edge of the bay as it's looking out into Green Bay. Um, on a summer day, there'd be a parade of boats going back and forth, and out in that uh, large mouth, we would see sailboats beginning their journey out into, out into uh, Green Bay. Uh, the land around us uh, on the on the north side, on the south side, excuse me, uh, there's there's homes and uh, development, but there's also Potawatomi Park, and there's the uh, there's a, a a lighthouse that is no longer being used. The shipping channel is right down the center of this of this bay and. Um, it's a it's just a lovely place to be uh, to our east we have a shipbuilding company of course Sturgeon Bay is still very active in rebuilding and building ships and luxury yachts uh, one of the few places in the United States with uh, expert craftsmen and dedicated people but once again here in this beautiful Sunset Park uh, we're having this lovely art fair today and uh, uh, People will be coming back and forth in their fishing boats and pleasure boats. Uh, perhaps they'll dock, perhaps they'll come in and enjoy this wonderful facility and the art fair and enjoy the people who are uh, putting this forward and the lovely food. Well, I'm sorry. And we're here with one of the food concessionaires, the ever-present at every event we see in Door County, lovely kettle corn provider. Yeah. And your name, sir? Dave McClure. Hi, Dave. Tell us the magic about kettle corn. Why I yearn kettle corn day in, day out, at night, when I wake up at night. Why is that? I, I, it's just a real good tasting product. It, it enhances a product that uh, everybody loves anyway, or most people do love popcorn. Right. And it just adds that little extra extra to it to, right. to make it uh, magical. Uh, yeah, we, it certainly is. So we, what are the secret ingredients, Dave? Well, the, I guess the love that we put into it. That's the only thing that's we obvious. figure out. And your friendliness as well. All right, I'll, and, I'll uh, buy that. And so it's made in a kettle, and the man behind us, tell, tell us about the steps, please. Well, uh, the steps start with uh, an oil. We use corn oil. Uh, the oil heats uh, about 300 degrees. And then the popcorn, of course, is about 13% uh, water. I don't know right. if you're aware of that. And once the water boils, that's what makes the, the popcorn pop. And then we add sugar. Yep. And the sugar mixes in with the oil and the popcorn, and that gives it that, that sweet taste. Right. And then after the pops, we uh, take it and blend it with uh, a little salt. Yep. And that's what does it. I, I, I think the key ingredient is the salt. It really brings out that uh, flavor. And uh, cooking it this way as he's stirring it with his industrial uh, steel worker face mask and so forth, uh, as opposed to in just standard oil popper, where's the magic there? It's, well, uh, it's uh, basically the safety factor because you can see the popcorn yeah. pops out uh, pretty good at the very beginning. and. Uh, we have enough burns on our arms and whatever to uh, attest to that. Also the screen, we allow people to watch yeah. us up close and we well, put the screen up there to protect it. You know, it's a beautiful product. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I know you're going to provide a lot of people with the magic and the happiness that kettle corn gives them. And uh, we're certainly hope we certainly hope so. It's uh, it is a great day. Well, it adds to the festivity of the whole event for sure. And okay. thanks for being here. Okay, thank you. We'll be back. And what would an art festival be like in Sturgeon Bay without brats, hamburgers, hot dogs, and uh, all the delicious trappings that goes with it? Here. Providing that service for all the happy people out at the art fair is the Sturgeon Bay Rotary Club, specifically the Breakfast Rotary. And um, gentlemen, your first names? Dale Swanson. Dale Swanson, good first name. Dick Matches. Dick, 
Yeah, Bill Betcher. Bill, hi guys, and can you tell me the uh, the specialness of the food that you're providing today? It's great. We got a great crew that's cooking up the food. It's hot. It's outstanding. It looks good from here, and it smells great from here. It's done a lot of years. Uh, and who does the grill cooking out? Our grill are taking a break right now. We filled up our uh, bins here, and we're ready to serve anybody. That's right. Well, I see the people coming, and they're. I see them with uh, hungry looks on their face, and you have the uh, the ready assistance of Molly. Hi, Molly, and Jill. Jill and Jill, how's it going in the uh, the sales department here? Pretty good. <laughs> good, and everybody's happy with the beautiful food being I provided. I hope so. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Well, enjoy the day and uh, beautiful girl serving beautiful food. That's his daughter's. Okay. Well, how could it be any better? Thank goodness for a good wife. Yeah, that's All that's right. right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, gents. And here we are with the Sturgeon Bay JCs, and um, they're providing uh, special food for the troops here and all the happy participants in the art fair. And your name, sir? Brian Frisk. Brian, great. And can you tell me about the food you're providing? Well, Dennis, we've got uh, chips and a pickle for a buck. We got the dollar menu. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything about any other restaurant, but we have the dollar menu too. It's high value. Uh, we've we've got a veggie tray and a, and a small melon tray, so that you can get some nice fruits and vegetables today. We also have a chicken wrap and a chicken breast sandwich. So Sounds good. So there's something for everyone. Something for everyone. You bet. You bet. Great. Fantastic. Tell me about your organization, the JCs. Well, we're the Sturgeon Bay JCs. We're a young person's leadership organi organization. Uh, we've been here in Sturgeon Bay for quite a number of years uh, with our clubhouse over on JC Court. And this is just another thing for us to outreach to the community uh, and add to the community. So, uh, you know, we try as best as we can to donate back to where we live and where we work and this is one thing that we do to, to help promote our, our organization. You're doing a really fine job and good vibes coming off your booth here. Uh, can you tell me about any specific projects you have going this year? Uh, well we've got a number of projects that we do every year. We uh, Every year we do a punt pass and kick. We usually do a haunted house every year. Um, we do uh, a Christmas tree pickup for the city of Sturgeon Bay every year. Uh, numer numerous projects plus we donate when there's a benefit that's happening. We donate back to that benefit too. Great organization Great day, great people, and I appreciate you being with us. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks appreciate a lot. it. Thanks. And here we are with one of the outstanding artists at the Sturgeon Bay Art Festival. Uh, the wind is blowing just lightly. The skies are treating us very fine for these exhibits. And we have with us one of the artists, Vivian Baumgartner. That's right. And Vivian, where are you from? I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. Lovely, lovely uh, uh, People's Republic of Madison. <laughs> Actually, I live a little north of Milwaukee right now. So. And where is that? I live out in the country um, by Campbellsport. Oh, lovely area. Yes. Great. Yeah. Tell me about your work and what things inspire you and obviously a good excuse to travel. Yes, I actually do photography for traveling reasons so that I can study other oil painters. I'm actually trained as an oil painter and a printmaker. I actually have a double bachelor's in oil painting and printmaking. From Madison? Or? Well, actually I started, I've been in five different colleges. I started in Madison and I ended up at UW-Milwaukee at the... Was uh, your dad happy about all that? <laughs> actually, I'm a dental hygienist too. I actually ended up at the Peck School of Art yes. um, in Milwaukee yes. and um, finished my bachelor's up there, my double bachelor's. And um, I do oil painting. I actually travel and compete as an oil painter in Florence, Italy at the Biennales, and I do use my photography, like you said, to study, um, to travel, but I use it as an alternative mode if I go and study regional artists also besides great masters throughout the world. So when the rest of us get on an airplane, you just jump on your camera and it takes you there. That's right. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about some of the pieces and uh, is it, are you using digital or film or a mix? I'm using a mix. You're going to see five different cameras here. Some are 35 millimeters. Some some are digital all the way from 3 megapixels to 8 megapixels. I'm actually looking at the Canon 12 megapixel right now. Got to have more megapixels Got, life yeah, isn't yeah. worth it, is it? Well, the thing is, I used to develop my own um, photography when I did black and white, but when George Lucas and all your great filmmakers went digital about five years ago, I decided to not develop my own photography so I could focus more time on my oil painting so I use the Photoshop CS you know I've upgraded it three times I used to have you know that's how you do it and so I use my 
HP printers. I have a DesignJet 130 and I have another smaller printer for my smaller prints, but they're all both HP. I love HPs and then I laminate everything. Of course, this is Greece. This is Lake Como in Italy. This is Positano. This is Rovello. So I travel a lot because there's a lot of regional artists that really inspire me too as an oil painter because as an oil painter I've studied the masters. I have a, a my minor is in art history also. So that I've studied the masters all over the world in all the galleries because I feel you can learn more on site than you can learn through a book or a classroom. Because I've done the classroom so now I'm doing the on-site study and so a lot of great masters that are not even that are of this time that are painting. You've packed many good years into your years haven't you? Yeah. I've and been great a, experiences. Yeah I've been a painter since I was a little kid. I was one of those kids that loved to draw circles and yeah so I just keep keep doing artwork. Yeah. Well we never stop learning and uh, I'm certainly learning a great admiration for your work. You do beautiful things uh, architecturally mostly and landscape. Do you do any macro or other types? Um, no actually I, when I do oil painting I do a lot of figurative stuff. Uh -huh. um, I, like I said I compete with the Biennales which is the largest art competition in the world for oil painters and that's in Florence, Italy and it's held every two years and I do some religious oil painting for that competition. Right now I'm working on a larger piece for them for two years. I was supposed to go this year but my mom had some illness so I've been taking care of her a lot the last two years. So I will be in two years going over there with a lot more large religious paintings. Excellent. Yeah. Well I wish you well. Uh, my wishing doesn't make it any better because you can't get much better but <laughs> you keep working at it and we thank you for the interview. Best to you Vivian. Thank you a lot. And as one of the other great artists here in Sturgeon Bay, we have a jewelry designer and uh, a crafter uh, artist, and your name is? Trisha Luke. Hi, Trisha. And where are you from? I'm from Burlington, Wisconsin. Lovely Burlington, Chocolate City, Wisconsin. Great. What's going on right now? <laughs> That's great. Tell us a little bit about your work, please. Um, this is all stained glass. Each piece is originally designed, one-of-a-kind pieces. Uh, it's all made out of glass and soldered and um, very unique and... Certainly is. Very creative. What is your art background? Um, I'm a graphic design major. Uh, I graduated from UW Parkside in Kenosha and this is what I do now. Good. How did you uh, make the leap into this media? My mom actually does stained glass panels and uh, she taught me how to do it. And from there, I started making jewelry and evolved to this. <laughs> well, your work is certainly pretty. Would you show us one or two pieces that you'd like to say a word or two about? Sure. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces right here, just because of the colors. And uh, this is actually called dichroic glass, so it changes colors in the light. Right. And this is a rose gold plated. So I solder it and then I get it rose gold plated on that. And it's a bigger piece, but it goes really good for, you know, anything really. And um, just something different and unique. Very lovely. And one more piece, Tricia? Um, Difficult see, decision. Is, I like them all. How this about is one this? of my favorite bracelets. I can see why. <laughs> um, and this, I love this piece. I actually had a necklace that went with it and it sold uh, last weekend, but. This is one of my favorites, and uh, this has different types of red and uh, brown glass in it, and it's a 14 karat gold plated, and uh, just different and unique. Lovely creation. Your work is great. And Thank you. Uh, are you located? Uh, do you have a shop in Burlington? Uh, no, I work out of my house. Excellent. Better yet. And okay. do art shows, and I have a website. Good. All and right. uh, it's uh, www downtown without the O in town designs.com. Excellent. Thank you very much. Trisha. Thank you well. very much. Thanks. And here we are with some other beautiful art, uh, some figurative creations. Uh, and your name, please? Carolinda. Hi, Carolyn, what? Carolinda, all one word. Carolinda, lovely. And tell us about these creations. They're um, whimsical flowers. They're made out of recycled aluminum and recycled glass pieces. So we go from paperweights to candy dishes to big plates. My goodness. So them. how do you find uh, all the materials for your work? Uh, go to flea markets and antique stores and garage sales and 
This is the best form of recycling. We're making beauty out of something that would be tossed. Exactly. How did you get into this particular art form? You know, um, it was just a natural evolution. I don't even know how it happened. It just, um, a ball of wire appeared and voila! You were moved. Yeah. And uh, these, these structures have movement even when they're stationary. They're lovely. I, I appreciate it. Where are, where are you from? I'm from Florida. Florida. What right. part of Florida? I'm near Tampa. It's a little town called Safety Harbor. Great. Well, welcome to our springtime in Thank Wisconsin. You. and uh, We love it here. Yeah, it's a wonderful place and hope you return and bring your good work well, again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Oh, bye, bye bye. The other booths of these fine artists at Sturgeon Bay uh, Art Fair and we have a spinner with us with the red shoes. And your name please? <laughs> I'm Ann Riser. Hi Ann Riser. Do those red shoes make the spinning wheel spin just a little easier for you? Actually, I should have them off, but being that I'm out in public, I try not to. Yeah, it's very considerate of <laughs> you. And very so considerate. Hard. Tell us about your spinning wheel first. Uh, it's a shocked wheel made out in Colorado. Beautiful piece, well constructed, and a little different configuration mm -hmm. than the traditional. Yes, it is. And how did you get into spinning? I raised the animals and worked my way up, and after producing 700 pounds of fiber a year, I really am highly motivated to use it. <laughs> I would guess so. <laughs> Where are you located, Ann? I'm over on the other side of the bay in Sabisky. Sabisky, very good. And you, so you're producing, you're selling uh, fabric, you're you're produce, you're selling yarn and beautiful sweaters and creations. Yes, I am. Um, and uh, our, and this is this is novel for me, a f sort of a frame created uh, art piece out of fiber. It's made out of wet felt. My um, goodness. Soap suds and agitation and lots of elbow grease. Lovely stuff. If people want to get a hold of you outside of the art fair, do you have a website? No, I do not. But they can find you. The telephone goes to my place and so does the mailman. Can All you right. believe it? So Ann Riser, <laughs> thank you very you much. Be well. Thank and included in this fine exhibit of uh, great artists and craftspeople, we have a wood artist. And uh, your name, sir? Toby McCullough. Hi, Toby. Where are you from? Uh, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Lovely Sun Prairie, where it's always sunny and it's kind of flat and prairie-like. Yeah. Very nice. Right next to Madison. Excellent. So you're doing wood turning mostly. And, right. And um, how did you get into this uh, beautiful work? Well, I've been turning for about 45 years. And so... I was a fence maker and a furniture maker for 40 years, and then I sort of gravitated to just wood turning. What appeals uh, to the uh, wood well, turning? Well, it's 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 all free. There's no measuring. It's just block free of wood. Form. My, all my things are made from trees and logs that go down in windstorms and are cleared. Lovely, super. So you're making a productive and beautiful piece that uh, we can all use and admire. Yep. Could you tell us about a couple pieces, Toby? Well, this is my wooden wine cork I make. Ah. This was my design. I One time a little old lady told me she couldn't get the wine bottle in the refrigerator with the wine cork on, so I decided to put one inside so it was, didn't stick up so hard. Very clever. So 10,000 of them later. Yes. <laughs> you got it down by now. Yep. All right. And this is burl. This is, this is cherry burl wood. My this goodness. is my favorite. Ooh. Such texture, yeah. such feeling yep. to that. It's yep. a lovely piece. And I just reveal it. That's all I do. This is ambrosia maple. My this is goodness. the color and everything in here is caused by the ambrosia beetle that goes in and creates all the color in the wood. So what, it's a natural. What great knowledge. Do you, do you laminate the wood after no, no, you're all, done? No, just the wood is natural. all turned green and it's left a certain thickness. And then after, then it's dried and then it's returned to get it to its final oh, thickness. Because oh, you, you really can't dry a piece of wood this thick. It'll crack. So if you turn it into a bowl form and seal the end grain and dry it, it'll warp, but then you leave it thick enough so you can get it back true again and sand and polish it. Uh, very great knowledge. And one more piece, Toby? Uh, well, these are, uh, these are these are vases that I make, and these are from old, old Osage Orange fence posts. <laughs> and so this fence post is probably 80 years old. Oh, my. And so we just turn a vase, it's got a glass vial. Wonderful that patina, out. great texture. Yeah, look at the color and yeah, stuff, it's just great. from its age. It's great. And Osage Orange doesn't decay. Ah. And these come from Mount City, Missouri. I have a friend there who's an excavator who saves me.
old fence posts. Oh, fortunate. Yeah, That's so great. it's really fun. So do you have a website, Toby? No, I don't. Do you have, uh, and, and Sun Prairie, uh, how can they find you? Uh, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Yeah, okay. Toby McCall, I'm in the book there. Okay, good. Well, I appreciate talking with okay. you today. Best of, best of luck. Have a wonderful day. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Ed. And here we are with a beautiful, beautiful watercolorist uh, doing some fine work, uh, southwestern types of uh, motifs in your name. He's Jerry Schraub. Hi, Jerry. Where are you from? DeForest, Wisconsin. DeForest. And is this your first time at the Sturgeon Bay Art Fair? Fourth. Fourth, yep. wonderful. And you've hit a beautiful day today, unlike some of the past ones. Yeah. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit about your work, please? Um, my work is inspired by the petroglyphs and pictographs, which are the carvings and paintings the ancient Native American people left on the rock faces. I travel to sites all across the United States and into Canada and see the sites personally, and then I do watercolor paintings based on the sites that I visit. So you have to be a very enduring uh, hiker <laughs> as well as a great artist. Well, yes. yes. I love the outdoors. Great adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. yeah. It's definitely an adventure. Um, and would you like to point out uh, one or two pieces for us and identify them specifically? Um, sure, actually. Um, like the Thunderbird in back is uh, inspired by a site here in Wisconsin at Rosha Creek State Park in central Wisconsin near Adams Friendship. On the rock face, he's just a small uh, thunderbird, but I chose to paint him large um, to kind of portray um, the energy of that image. Do we know which native people did that? No, not, okay. not definitively, we okay. don't, no. Um, at least I don't. Okay. Okay. Um, I would also like actually to talk about this piece. I don't know if you can, can you get that one or is that too difficult? This is inspired by a site um, in the Quetico, Canoe, uh, Quetico Provincial Park in Ontario. Um, the boundary waters in Quetico of northern Minnesota and Ontario. It's a large wilderness area where you get around by canoe camping. And my husband and I travel to sites up there every year. It's one of my favorite places to go. And this is based on one of the pictograph images up there. They're Marvel. painted on the rock faces um, as you travel along the waterway. So your media is all watercolor. All watercolor. And after you are uh, influenced by these pieces and photograph them or whatever, you go home and you make these creations. Yep. Wonderful. Okay. You do a wonderful job. Great. You exude great energy, and it's nice talking with you. Nice talking with you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And uh, just uh, as further information for the art admirers, um, what could your website be, Jerry? My my website is artglyphs, A-R-T-G-L-Y-P-H-S dot com, or you can Google my name, Jerry Schraub, and you'll find it. All right. That's okay. with uh, 1B. That's with 1B. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> What would an art fair be like without the on-site uh, portrait uh, painter? Um, and this is a wonderful portrait creation, creator, and your name, sir? Bernie Tennis. Bernie. And where are you from, Bernie? I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. Madison. And it uh, looks like you've been doing this for just a little while. Just a little while, close to 15 years. Oh, 15. You, beautiful likenesses, and you're working in... Well, this is a type of painting crayon made by a company called Karan Dash, and it's a wax-based painting crayon. goes on permanently, and it looks uh, sort of like a pastel drawing when you get done. Yes, it does. Yeah. Very nice textures, very nice creations. What started you in this line of work? Well, I always was searching about for a way I could make a living at art, and I'd like to draw people more than anything else, so it's sort of a natural thing to do. Well, a great <laughs> success, and, you're, uh, and you make people happy at the same time. I try to. Yes, you do. <laughs> and uh, your subject today, a young lady, uh, truly a celebrity with beautiful straight teeth. Uh, whoops, Bernie, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> your name? Sarah Robledo. Sarah, hi. And uh, what do you think about having your picture painted? Pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's very cool, too. Wait till you see the beauty that uh, he's creating on paper here. <laughs> Have you ever had this done before? No. Nope. Uh, this is going to be a great uh, end to your school year. Uh, what are you planning to do this summer? Um, I don't know. Kind of celebrate this picture? <laughs> yeah. Going to show it to your friends? Definitely. Going to use it for the Miss Sturgeon Bay con competition? 
<laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Great. Anything you want to say to uh, to your friends? No, not really. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Don't run away. You see. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to the beautiful wood turners and painters and uh, photographers, we also have other wood creations. Um, and we see walking sticks of all variety and other carvings. Your name, sir? Mickey Beth. Mickey Beth. And you're from? Well, we're actually from Dundee, Wisconsin. That's where they had that whole makeover. Oh, so it's uh, in the northern northern Kettle Moraine area. How are those folks doing? Oh, wonderful. They good. just love their Good, house, good. So. Tell me about your walking sticks and what wood you use. And okay, well, we've been making walking sticks for, I think, 15 or 16 years, and uh, we love to use uh, different kinds of wood, like this is a buckthorn, mm -hmm. and uh, the younger generation, I was really getting into their hiking sticks. Yeah. We started out a long time ago, so we were kind of at the very beginning of the hiking stick craze, but uh, we have people that have bought 16 hiking sticks from us. They come back every year and buy Wonderful. another hiking stick. So we sign and date them. And uh, yeah, like I said, we, this is an eagle. And we would burn a little eagle or a little uh, flag on here. And uh, so we just try to keep coming up with something new every year. So will the stick show the number of miles a person puts on it by the amount of wear on no, the No, but the, the person themselves, you can tell that they've That's know, they got a lot of miles good left use, on them. Good so use, yeah, good yeah, use. Yeah. Can you show me uh, one or two of your favorite sticks, Mickey? Well, I think this is, this is a favorite one here. This is an eagle. And it's a short, short stick, and it's got a, it's very comfortable. And then we have uh, black walnut ones here, and it looks like we've got a very unique uh, laser carving here on the top of it. But this is actually a piece of a black walnut, so it was oh, nature's nature's way of uh, very uh, coming up with very, something very beautiful. So. Very nice. And so. then we have the Door County. Uh, protected dragonfly, the green dragonfly. The so. sacred dragonfly, yes. 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 So I've so. done some photography of the green dragonfly. Right. And so um, you've been doing this for how long again? About 16 Mickey? years. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you certainly keep expressing yourself and growing in this art yeah. form. And you do all these personally? Absolutely. My yeah. goodness. One is a one of a kind. No idle time in your house? Uh, not right now, no. Great. Well, we do you have a website if someone wants to contact Now, that you? must have been a pun, because we have ducks. So there was, <laughs> <laughs> But no, we don't. All right. We, and we, Dundee, I Wisconsin. I guess the reason we don't is because we change things so much every year. We, yeah. And it would be hard to keep keep up, I think. But, but people can contact. And we're retired, and we only do about eight shows a year. So Excellent. We're well, just happy coming up to Door County. Well, we're des delighted you're here and we thank you for presenting oh, thank us. You. Thank you. As with any great fair, whether it have been in medieval times or in modern times, there's always the basket weaver. And we have w w with us one of the finest basket weavers in this area. And your name? My name is Sue Price. Hi, Sue. And where are you from? I'm from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Lovely Waukesha, where I get lost whenever I try to drive through it. So do I. <laughs> okay. Um, so tell so us I. how you got into basket weaving. I made my first basket as a brownie. I still have it, and it is awful. <laughs> so just a couple years ago. Yeah, just a few years yes. ago, and I've been doing it ever since. Marvelous and beautiful creations, lovely shapes. Oh, thank you. Uh, what kinds of woods and uh, fibers do you work in? Um, I usually use uh, reed as the base, and then uh, there are inlays of either walnut, cherry, maple, ash, all different kinds of woods and we're watching this emerald ash borer very closely because it could affect my ash supply. Oh, is it white ash you use? No, or? it's called brown, well in Wisconsin it's called black ash, in Michigan it's called brown ash, but it's basically the same tree. Got it. And it, so that's the principal material besides the well, reed. Yeah, beside reed. Oh and my goodness. We're watching that one kind so, of So a uh, basket like this for an experienced person like yourself, um, how long does that typically take? About three hours. Three hours, mm -hmm. and you have a form you work on? Oh, no. Or? This is all shaped by hand. My goodness. You're, your you're a wonderful Your right creation. hand does the weaving, your left hand does the shaping. And the bending of the wood, it's... it's that comes pre-bent as a, a purchased handle. Uh -huh. And uh, that I don't have to worry about other than just to sand it and finish it off. Beautifully but done. Every, Beautifully every done. other shaping is done by hand. Susan, do you have a website? Or? I have a website, but it's brand new. Okay. It just has a few things on it. Okay. And Would you wish to, to share it with us? Oh, sure. It's okay. um, 
www, of course, basketartistrybysusan.com. Bysusan.com. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure, thank All you. Right. And here we are. What would a great art fair be without the great musician? And we have a lovely uh, violin uh, backed by this incredible violin player. And your name, sir? Uh, Dan Ognovic from Sheboygan. Hi, Dan. And it, it seems like we see you at a lot of these. Uh, you're a great enthusiast, enthusiastic guy in the art fair. And we appreciate the, uh, the beautiful feeling that you put into your violin. Well, thank you very much. There's a lot of artists here at the Art Festival, and I'm happy to be part of it each year. Well, you, you really bring a lot to it. Um, what is your, can you tell us anything about your violin? Well, it's a catalog violin. I got it over the internet for about $200. <laughs> Well, you certainly bring the be most beautiful sound out of it. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. How long have you been playing? Uh, since 10 o'clock. <laughs> thank you. Very, very good. You yeah, way. amen, amen. Oh, about, about 40 years. 40 years. Would you uh, just give us a little sign-off short piece? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And every art fair needs to have a coordinator and has needs to have that central hub for information. And we're at that right now, and we're with the director of uh, Sturgeon Bay Visitors Bureau. Yep. And your name, sir? My name is Todd Trimberger. Todd, and how are you? Good, and, and how are you? Tell us, good. And uh, tell us about this booth and the event in general. This is a new uh, event this year. This is our raffle. Um, over 50 of the artists that are here donated a piece, and um, we're raffling off the items tomorrow. And the benefits ben benefit the Sturgeon Bay Visitor Center, who puts on this art fair. And we are going to keep over a portion of the inventory for the Fire and Ice Ball, which is in February. Great. A win-win situation. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. We're promoting the artists, and people can see samplings of the work in one spot and then go to their booth. Wonderful. How long have you been the director of the visitors? Uh, I think it's been about three months now. Feels like three years, but it's been right? three okay. months. Well, it's been a great experience, though. It's wearing like well it. on you, I yeah, must I say. I love my job. So great. It's wonderful. good. Wonderful. And... Uh, the artists are from all over. We've interviewed a few today. Yep. They, everyone seems to really be enjoying themselves. Yep. We have actually over a 60% return rate every excellent, year. Excellent, yep. excellent. And it is a juried event, so they're And somehow, Todd, by being a coordinator for the last three months, instead of the uh, weather that we've had in past years, you've brought good weather here. <laughs> well, I thank hope you. that's the case. Six, a successful rain. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And if people want to get, get uh, a website to find out what's going on in Sturgeon Bay, where to stay, events that are happening, uh, what would that website it's be? It's www.vacationsturgeonbay.com. Very good, thank you. Den at the door with uh, audiovisual man extraordinaire Laddie Chapman and our producer uh, finalizing this report at this year's wonderful Sturgeon Bay Art Fair uh, here at Sunset Park. Uh, the folks are enjoying themselves, uh, enjoying great food, all the great types of media and art, commingling and seeing old friends and making new friends. It's a great place to do it. It's a great place year-round. Um, thanks for coming with us on this trip to the art fair.